right now on Sunrise going back to work. Thousands of Minnesotans will do that starting Monday. I'll tell you which businesses were given the green light. Minnesota schools ordered to shut their doors for the rest of the year. I can't express, I'm sure, the, the sense of loss you've had. What this means for your kids and the favor Governor Walls is asking of them. Two house cats are now infected with the coronavirus. We break down the new guidelines every pet owner should hear. Plus, he spent years fighting fires in Minneapolis, but now he's turning his attention to a different kind of battle. The incredible way this man is taking on the coronavirus to help frontline workers. Showers for some today, but still looking like a nice weekend, and we have some warmer temperatures in the seven day. It's Friday, April 24th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. With the 31st pick, in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Jeff Gladney. Nobody says party like Roger Goodell. Welcome to Minnesota. Jeff Gladney, the one of two first round picks for the Vikings last night. We're doing a dive into the team's new playmakers in just a bit, but we want to know what do you think of the picks? Join the conversation by texting 763-797-7215. But first, let's get you caught up on what you need to know heading into the weekend. We have Alicia and Gia at home. Sven's going to kick things off with a check of that forecast. Yeah, and it's looking better for today than uh, what it looked like yesterday. Uh, most of the showers staying to our south this morning and uh, less in the way of cloud cover too, so it means a little warmer for our Friday. Uh, we are seeing rain showers out of the south, uh, south of mostly the Minnesota River, down around Mankato and Elbert Lee, seeing some rain showers this morning. 44 degrees, though, mild start. Clouds are actually breaking up overhead, so we'll see some sunshine for the middle part of your day today and temperatures warming up a little bit more in the low to mid 60s thanks to some of that sun. Looks good. Thanks, Sven. We're tracking the latest overnight in the battle against the coronavirus. Here are the top headlines you need to know. A deadly milestone here in Minnesota. The coronavirus death toll now at 200. We're just shy of 3,000 confirmed cases. In over half of those cases, people have since recovered. Today, President Trump will sign off on nearly $500 billion in aid for small businesses, hospitals, and testing. In just a few hours, Georgia and several other states will begin to reopen, despite some of them not meeting the president's 14-day guidelines. Well, Chris, Governor Walz also announcing that thousands of businesses can reopen on Monday. Ellery McArdle is live outside the Capitol. She's following this story. And Ellery, this is news that a lot of people wanted to hear. Yeah, because, Gia, I think all of us want to hear some sort of news that things may be going back to normal sooner than later. But for these businesses, you know, this is going to be a gradual process to reopen. Uh, so on Monday, about 20,000 Minnesota businesses uh, have been given the green light to go back to work. That means up to 100,000 Minnesotans can go back to work, but there are some restrictions. So according to the state, those eligible to reopen Monday include non-critical industrial manufacturing and office-based businesses or nonprofits as long as they don't come in contact with customers. Employees must be able to telework when possible. Those coming in uh, should have daily health screenings and each business must create a preparedness plan that follows state and federal guidelines. Now our team talked with a a company called Indigo Sign Works. They went back to work in Chanhassen this week because they make signs for critical businesses. Now, its CEO says for his team, going back to work was a big adjustment. Even though we had it scheduled so that people were staggering their starts, they were six feet apart, uh, we were wearing masks, uh, it just felt odd. And I think people had to kind of overcome that initial anxiety of coming back. Yeah, so it goes to show, you know, this is going to be a gradual, slow process in terms of who the governor is going to allow to reopen, but also, you know, physically getting back into the swing of things at a workplace, as you just heard uh, from that CEO, uh, but also the emotional and, and mental impact as well. You know, yesterday at the press conference when the governor was talking, uh, we also heard from a Red Wing business owner who started to tear up on the podium because he was just so excited and, and relieved that finally his business can reopen. Gia? Right. Getting back to that new normal to Ellery is going to be interesting for sure. Thank you. Another big story we're following is the future of the school year in Minnesota. Governor Walls made it official yesterday that schools will remain closed the rest of the year. Districts are now postponing graduation ceremonies and the state high school league announced spring sports are now officially canceled. 
I can't express, I'm sure, the, the sense of loss you've had, but I would ask you to, uh, to see your unique role. You're going to have a life experience that none of us had. It is going to shape how you think about the things you do in the future. And I, for one, um, am very hopeful about that. And coming up at 630, we will hear from students directly impacted by this order. Yeah, Chris, uh, got to be strange if you're a student right now or a graduating senior, right? Yeah, not unexpected this move, but I was talking to some students earlier this week and they say they're slowly getting used to Zoom and all these things to, you know, stay online with their friends and their teachers mm -hmm. as well. So they'll be doing that the rest of the year. Thanks, Gio. Now to a story we first told you yesterday on Sunrise. Two pet cats in New York tested positive for COVID-19 this week, and now there's some new guidance about how you should interact with your furry family members. A lot of you have questions, so our Verified team found the answers. Let's start out with the facts from the CDC. Both of these cats had and are expected to make a full recovery. The owners of one cat had been sick and tested positive with COVID-19. The other owners had not been sick, and we don't know whether these were indoor or outdoor cats. For months now, the CDC and those who have pets likely aren't at risk of getting the virus. So what changed? Well, nothing really. The CDC and World Health Organization were basing their stance on evidence, and so far there's been no solid evidence that pets were getting the virus. But that was partly because animals hadn't been tested much. With these two confirmed cases, the CDC is updating their guidance on pets right now. They still don't believe pets play a significant role in spreading the virus, but they have suggested to be cautious. Don't let your pets interact with people or other animals outside your house. Keep cats indoors when possible and avoid crowded places like dog parks. Yeah, Chris, uh, I remember that when COVID-19 really started, we were saying, okay, pets can't get COVID-19. And then we said, oh, actually, maybe they could. So things always change with this. And yesterday I decided not to take Teddy to the dog park. I know he hasn't been out in a while, but we decided not to do it because of this. Uh, probably a wise move because there are so many unknowns right now. But the CDC does say if you are sick, not to cuddle up with them, which will be hard to do. And if you can, try to have another person take care of them. Well, if there's something you'd like us to verify, send an email or video of your question to verify at carelovin.com. You can also reach out to us on social media. Let's get to Sven for the one thing weather. Yeah, we're looking at uh, an improved day today. Most of the showers are staying to the south. That means a little more sun, warmer temperatures. Still might have in one or two evening showers, but otherwise a mostly dry Friday. Hey, thanks, Sven. These two will look good in the purple and gold. The Vikings add some big-time playmakers in its first-ever virtual draft. So fans wanted a receiver and another cornerback, and GM Rick Spielman delivered. Eric Perkins introduces us to the future of the franchise. Good morning. The NFL draft virtual style is officially in the books for the first round. Of course, rounds two and three happen today, rounds four through seven tomorrow. But last night in the first round, the Vikings land themselves two new players. At the 22nd overall spot, they get Justin Jefferson, a very talented wide receiver from the national champion Bayou Bengals. Jefferson is mostly a slot receiver, but has vertical potential as well. They love his route running. They love his pass catch catching ability. He's a super talent who frankly was a bit of a surprise to see him available at 22. With the 25th selection, the Vikings actually trade back with the San Francisco 49ers. In return, they get a fourth round pick and a fifth round pick from the 49ers, but they also get the 31st overall pick in the first round. And with that, they select a cornerback, another position of need. They get Jeff Gladney, a corner from TCU, the Horn Frog. So definitely two positions that are addressed that the Vikings needed to address. It'll be interesting to see what they do with a dozen picks still remaining over the next two days. Back to you. All right, Eric, thanks for breaking that down for us. So now that the picks are in, so are the hot takes. Alicia is digging into that in our digital dive. Yeah, Gia, our Sunrisers are super excited about football season, and a lot of our Sunrisers are super excited about Justin Jefferson, that pick from LSU. So let's read some of your comments this morning. Rudy says, I like the pick of Jefferson. Yeah, and talking about Jefferson, Jamie said that she actually heard from a friend in Louisiana that knows him and his family. Sounds like we got a solid player on and off the field. I think we made a great pick. 
And then we got this text from the 612 area code this morning saying, I like the Vikings' first two picks. Now we need to pick the best offensive lineman available. They need better protection for Kirk Cousins. A lot of great hot takes from our Sunrisers this morning, Chris, and uh, something to look forward to. Love the hot takes. Good stuff. People excited Chris. about football. That draft continues all weekend long, so you got something to watch if you're a sports fan. Thanks, Alicia. How close are we to a vaccine? It's a question a lot of us are asking. This morning, we're getting an inside look at the race to end this pandemic. Then, heroes helping heroes. How firefighters are stepping up to help medical workers on the front lines of the fight of COVID-19. Plus, some essential workers say their companies care more about sales than employee health. What they're planning to show they've had enough of. 